Hey YouTube, how's it going? Uh, Andrea here uh, with this new uh, channel which uh, will cover, I feel, a lot of different things. I'm not sure if it will be just a channel dedicated to wine specifically, but let's see where it goes. Uh, I want to cover a lot of different other things that kind of interest me and that I'm passionate about. Um, so potentially I will just group them all in one single channel, just share that with, with you. Uh, or potentially I can just dedicate this one to, to wine, so let's see how it goes. Um, so I'm originally from Portugal, my experience with wines is mainly with Portuguese wines. Um, then ever since I started living abroad, um, I realized that actually it's pretty hard to find Portuguese wines abroad. I'm currently living in the Netherlands and here you can find them a bit more easily um, at Holland Hall or yeah, if you order uh, online from other retailers. Uh, so there's a bit more variety, but um, yeah, even before in Helsinki, I did also manage to to find some um, some green wine, mostly at uh, at the Alco. So in Finland, you can only buy alcohol in these special uh, government shops um, with huge taxes. So the wine there. Portuguese wine that I that I used to buy it was I uh, don't remember exactly uh, it was not I think Gazella uh, so one of the staple green wines from Portugal I used to buy it there for like triple the price of what you can buy for uh, in Portugal but yeah um, so yeah basically here you can you can find some variety uh, but uh, yeah in I've lived in other countries as well, uh, for example, in Taiwan, it was yeah impossible to, to find any Portuguese wines at all. So I started yeah just uh, trying to find uh, other wines within yeah the kind of taste profile that I like from from other countries and regions. So I started drinking a lot of red wine from from Australia because they use mostly Shiraz grapes and those are present. In some of the wines that we have in uh, in Alentejo and in, in southern Portugal, which is basically my my favorite region for, for red wine. Um, in the meantime, I also started uh, enjoying um, yeah white wine from from Marlborough or from New Zealand a lot, so Sauvignon Blanc. But uh, I don't know uh, if it's because of their terroir or uh, yeah some other. Um, some other circumstances there, but uh, it's it's really unique. It's quite fruity. You can really feel the the tropical fruits, passion fruits, and citrus, you know, coming through. So pretty enjoyable. Um, and in the meantime, I also started drinking some some Italian wines, Ripasso, uh, Montepulciano, etc. Uh, also within within my taste profile. Um, so yeah, I think I started uh, becoming a bit more serious about wines uh, once I started using this Vivino app. So before I was actually more of a, a beer buff uh, using Untapped and uh, yeah, trying all the, all the different styles of beer. Uh, and uh, I feel these companion apps really help you, you know, get into a specific theme, uh, record the, the Develop, yeah, basically the drinks that you that you try and rate them, and basically also giving you the opportunity to to find out uh, more uh, more uh, yeah varieties that you may enjoy. So yeah, Vivino has has helped a lot. Um, it's a great app. Um, there's a lot of knowledgeable people I feel in it, uh, creating reviews and describing their experience and the way the wines taste. Uh, it really builds a, a good database of, of what you enjoy. And so I, I rely a lot on the on the sort of taste profile match that they have this percentage on the top. Basically helps me choose wines that, that are in accordance with, with what I may enjoy. Um, I've never tried actually ordering anything from, from Vivino. So 
this was my my first attempt doing it um, so you can see the whole order uh, afterwards so I will I will post it on the channel basically I went for <laughs> three Italian wines and three French wines um, so six wines in total and uh, I paid 76 euro 20 cents for for the six bottles so they're all pretty much uh, under the 15 euro range um, so I relied on on the on the ratings and also the taste profile so I believe there's one that is 3.9 but all, all the remaining ones are all above four um, I got this uh, Chateau de Saint Cosme uh, basically because I also started uh, reading this manga recently. I just I had no idea uh, of what it was about. Actually, I, I knew it was about wines, but uh, I just bought it from a colleague. Uh, he had these three first volumes, and he sold them to me for five euro each, which is quite a bargain because I checked, and these are actually out of print uh, in English. And um, yeah, you can get them second hand, but it's like 30, 40, 50 euro, uh, maybe. So yeah, it was a really good buy. And it really, yeah, the, the, the way the story is built, uh, it really makes you get into, you know, the, the, whole, the, the whole wine um, experience. Yeah, from the, from the main character, the way it describes uh basically the the wines that it tastes is very cinematic very well built so i strongly recommend this series and made me get much more into french wine although second volume there's yeah i will cover it later but there's this big rivalry with um, this other employee that works at a company uh, of the main character and this other employee is much more into italian wines so um, yeah, no one spoil it for you, but it's it's quite interesting and kind of <clears throat> sort of mimics a bit what I tried to do here. So yeah, I went for three French wines and three uh, Italian wines, all red wines. Um, so yeah, let's open, let's uh, unbox the the, the wines. Um, they uh, they arrived quite quickly, so I ordered through Vivino, but in sort of three days and the box arrived. Uh, I was a bit reluctant because I never ordered something just directly through an app. And also this app is connected to, to other uh, retailers. So this actually came from Colaris, which is um, a shop here in the Netherlands that was established in 1922. Uh, it seems to be pretty well packaged and delivery was extremely fast. Uh, you get free shipping over 75 euro if you do it through Vivino while on their own website as far as I could tell. You need to order I think above 125 euro or something so it really pays off to do it through Vivino. Um, and yeah, the, it was just perfect. I received confirmation mail from Vivino. Then you can see when it's shipped. Uh, then they gave me a tracking number but I barely uh, yeah, I didn't even have to use it because uh, after they sent me the tracking number, the, the, the order just arrived almost immediately. So, yeah. So, I'm going to uh, unbox the, the wines now. So, I'm just gonna change uh, yeah, the camera and uh, I'll also try to film a bit with, with my phone. Uh, not the best um, setup for sure, but uh, yeah, just bear with me. Eventually, if things pick up, I will, I will invest in a in a much better setup. But so far, it's pretty amateurish. Uh, I've been following this channel from from another YouTuber, Constantin, and uh, that's pretty impressive. He has, of course, much more knowledge, and then just the whole uh, set right in that beautiful French basement and um, yeah all the production that goes uh, behind it it's definitely impressive so we're doing sort of a very low budget version here uh, with someone that is much less knowledgeable but equally passionate about wines i would say so 
let's go for it. All right, so here's the package. I kind of ruined it a bit, removing my address. Uh, you can see the brand here from the retailer. Collar is established in 1922. Um, so I got this wine opener. I felt it was extremely thematic to do it with it. So just opening here and here. Uh, so it comes quite interesting, interestingly packed. Uh, so let me film it with my phone. So as you open it, there's just one bottle of you. Um, so this is Corvina Verona, Ripa, Magna. They're all from 2020. Uh, so let's just get this out of the way, I'll set it here, all right, then it opens up like this, we have our second wine, Chateau Bois de Roland, Bordeaux, now the one from Drops of God, Chateau de Saint Cosme, the one from Drops of God is from 2001, but yeah, this is a 2020 Le de Avion Cote de Bon. We will go through uh, each of the individual wines in more detail later. So, I'll just put this out of the way. And below, we find the other three wines. So there's a Chateau de Berguet, Fonsac. There's this Oro Italiano, limited edition. And finally, really looking for for this one so it's the 1954 Puglia Primitivo all right so we're back and we will go uh, in a bit more detail through all the six wines that uh, I ordered and that we unboxed uh, just moments ago so let's start with the three Italian ones uh, first up we have this Oro Italiano limited edition like I mentioned before, they're all from uh, 2020. Um, and basically, uh, this one has a 4.1 rating uh, on Vivino. It's a red wine from Tuscany with Sangiovese grapes. It cost a mere uh, 10 euro, actually 9.95. And uh, yeah, the taste profile is pretty similar to what I normally enjoy. So you have notes of black currant and red sherry. Uh, also chocolate, vanilla and raisin and uh, it's a pretty dry wine um, so we can go through some of the reviews uh, so for example I see there's a lot of reviews from from Dutch users uh, already uh, because yeah probably you can find this easily uh, in the Netherlands um, so one user case says uh, it's powerful Tuscan, but also soft, uh, red fruit, black fruit, red cherries, black cherries, chocolate, vanilla, cherry, brandy, strawberry. Okay, that's a little bit too much. It doesn't really give us a lot of information, but yeah. So juicy forest fruits, ripened blackberries, ripened cherry, plum jam, warm, full and intense. Great Tuscan, dark ruby red in color. So these are excerpts from other reviews as well. So, yep, looking forward to trying this one. Let's go to the next. Mm -hmm. So next up we have this Tinazzi 
Tenuta Valecele Ripa Magna Corvina, also from 2020. Uh, it's a 4.2 on Vivino, there's 113 ratings. It costs also uh, 11.50, so very affordable wine. Um, so actually there's some information about the uh, uh, winery on Vivino, it's sort of highlighted. Um, so you can go through that if you are interested. This one uh, also on the dry side and uh, the first flavors that are mentioned are actually oak, vanilla and chocolate, plum and blackberry. So potentially a little less sweet than the previous one. Um, so there's uh, one review. So the three highlighter reviews are all 4.5, even though the average rating is 4.2. Um, so one user says it surprised me, red fruit, but also blackberry and leather, vanilla, but very fruity. Amazing by itself and even better with the pasta that they had. So I will be sure to, to try it uh, with pasta, which is actually something that I cook for myself quite frequently. Um, so yeah, you can check more information on the on the Vivino page. Then uh, there's also a highlight explaining uh, the wine style from Northern Italy. And yeah. So in terms of vintages, it seems that 2019 uh, is actually better ranked than this one. Um, but um, yeah, it's ranked number three in the top 25 Northern Italy red wines uh, in the Netherlands right now. Um, but uh, I don't think it's available anymore. So 2020 seems like a really good bet at uh, 4.2 rating. So yeah, that's the second Italian wine. And then the last one, uh, it's actually the one <coughs> I'm looking at. Uh, most forward uh, to try, uh, which is this Cantine Paradiso 1954 Primitivo Puglia. Uh, that's just the name of the winery. It's not really, uh, or the name of the wine, it's not really the vintage. So it's also 2020. But um, yeah, it's from Puglia and it has Primitivo grapes. This one costs 15 euro, so still pretty much affordable, uh, like all of them. It mentions it's a bit less dry, more on the sweet side, and boldness level is even higher than the previous ones. Also mentions vanilla, chocolate, oak, uh, plum, blackberry. And um, yeah, the reviews are great. So 4.4, 4.6. A user says that it's a very complicated but super delicious Primitivo. Uh, another user says toffee and earthy. Oh, it is high on alcohol, it's a 15%, but uh, yeah, uh, still pretty much within the range for red wine. Chocolate, mocha, deep, dark cherry, vanilla aromas. My first sip was pepperoni flavor and the pizza wasn't even ready yet so <laughs> I actually like these more uh, inventive reviews on, on Vivino sometimes you have uh, quite some original ones so this one is from southern Italy um, so Primitivo a huge ripe Italian grape which is the pride of the Apulia region uh, very brash wine, very dark, very juicy, and very high on alcohol. So let's see how that goes. Uh, in terms of vintages, the 2018 has a 4.4, and actually there's a 1954 mentioned here as at 4.4 as well. So potentially that was. Yeah, it does say that the first wine that they produced was in 1954, and that's what sort of gave it a name, I guess. Um, but yeah, looking forward to trying this one. I think this is this is gonna be my favorite from the Italian ones. 
So now let's go through the French ones. Um, so first up we have this Chateau de Saint Cosme. So like I mentioned, I ordered this mostly because I saw it mentioned on the, on the Drops of God uh, manga. So it's not, it's definitely not the best wine that they mentioned. Uh, the other ones are a little bit out of my budget. I think the cheapest one that I saw mentioned on the manga, well, besides this one, which is ridiculously cheap, but I think the, the from the, let's say the higher range ones, the cheapest that I saw in the manga was 300 euro. And then of course there's some, uh, uh, supposedly uh, epic wines that cost several thousand euro so potentially one day I will get to appreciate those I think uh, at this point it would be sort of uh, sort of waste of money but if someone watching wants to invite me to taste it and make a video out of it I will definitely not refuse um, so yes, yeah, so basically this wine uh, is rated 3.9, so a bit lower than what I normally would go for. Uh, but then the individual user reviews, we see some 4.2 for, uh, so uh, the user that rated 4.2 refers clear deep ruby in color with medium plus intensity and notes of violet, jasmine, black plum, blueberry fresh blackberry, red peppercorn, green peppercorn, cola, and cocoa nibs. Wow, okay, that's uh, that's really hard to imagine, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, so it's from the Southern uh, Rhine uh, region. Um, and uh, I believe it's a blend of different variety of grapes. Uh, so yeah, it uses Morvedre, Carignan, Claret, Shiraz, Rancher. Um, it's also 50% in alcohol. So we can read a bit more here on the back of the label. Uh, and it says the co-fermentation of several grapes together is a tradition very much used by our grandfathers. They didn't care about adding more fresh grapes on an already fermented juice. This method reminds me, it's not, the translation could be better, uh, so, <laughs> but this method reminds of the chef who cooks slowly for a long time, gradually adding new ingredients because nothing replaces time. Well, I can certainly relate to that and Portuguese cuisine has a lot of that where you just throw a bunch of ingredients in a pot and just let it cook for hours. Uh, of course, yeah, it's hard to find patience to do that uh, these days, but yeah, I do remember my grandmother waking up at 8 in the morning to, to cook uh, these stews uh, normally for, for Sunday lunch or uh, these yeah, huge slabs of roasted meat, but yeah. Uh, not, and so continuing, and nothing is better than several ingredients cooked together. And then mentions sherry, raspberry, pepper, truffle, roasted bacon. All right. So yeah, that's it for the St. Cousin. Uh, let's move ahead. Almost drop my tablet with my list. Um, so next up, we have this Chateau Bois de Roland, Cuvet Prestige Bordeaux Superior. It's a 4.2. Um, so it's also a blend of different grapes. Um, it has some description that, yeah. Uh, this wine belongs to a property from the family Jeroma. Uh, it's situated 25 kilometers east of saint emilion uh, It has an homogeneous terroir. Yeah, they say they vinify in barrel 
uh, for 12 months. And they mentioned vanilla, red fruits, and strawberries. And uh, very powerful tannins and a fresh finale. So on the sort of ranges, it's heavy on the bold, tannic and acidic parts and dry. It's quite extreme actually. Um, so there's this user gives it a 4.5. He mentions dry cherries, blackberry and spices, nice chocolate undertones, medium weighted tannins and nicely integrated French oak. Great value for money. They do say that it spends 12 months in uh, aging in, uh, in an oak barrel. So, uh, so it's a Bordeaux red. <laughs> And um, the best vintage is actually from 2012, but uh, they say that this 2020 has great value for money and I will potentially agree. I will do some tasting videos uh, later on for each of these wines, uh, try to pair it with some, uh, some appetizers that I feel would go nicely with them. Um, so yeah, let's let's go through them uh, in uh, future videos. So there's just one last wine to cover, <coughs> and it's this one. Let me just pull up some additional information about it. So it's uh, Chateau de Berger and uh, Cuvée Tradition Fransac also 2020 it's uh so this wine is made out of merlot grapes from fonsac um it says 20 euro here but i'm pretty sure i paid less for it let me see the details yeah i paid 10 euro for it but now on Vivino, it mentions that the average of all prices is 20 euro. So I guess I got a pretty decent deal for it. Uh, on the tracks, so it's between smooth and tannic, between soft and acidic, quite dry and bold. So let's just read one of the reviews from Erica. She mentions plum, dark fruit and berry, full bodied and smooth, low acidity. And it's from the John and Patsy's collection. Hmm. I wonder what else do they have on their collection. So yeah, the style is a Bordeaux Libournais, Merlot based blends, juicy red fruit, Fruit, smooth body, and subtle tannins. Exactly what I'm looking for. Um, this is actually the highest rated vintage at 4.4. Uh, the 2000, but it only has 29 ratings, so it's worth what it's worth. The 2019 has a 4.1 out of 319 ratings, and it mentions it was number 93 in the International Wine Report. And uh, yeah, 2018 seems to have gotten some love as well from Vivino users. So yeah, that's basically it. So we went through all six wines in a bit more detail, but of course these stats and reviews are worth what they're worth. Um, I will need to go through the wines myself and taste them and yeah, at the end of the day, it all depends on what you like um, and what uh, your taste profile is. Um, so the best way to find the wines that uh, actually suit you better is just to drink lots of them and then just um, yeah, make your decisions and go from there. Um, I will cover uh, these wines in more detail, like I mentioned. Um, let me know if there's any other ideas that you may have. I already told you that 
I'm living in the Netherlands. I will also potentially go back to Portugal quite a few times throughout the year. So perhaps you want to learn more about Portuguese wines. I will be sure to create some videos while I'm there. Uh, the supermarkets are just insane. You have huge wine sections. I mean, Vivino is a godsend in identifying all of them and record them. So, uh, so yeah, it's just an insane experience to buy wine in Portugal. There's just so many different uh, co-ops, wineries, you know, special editions, uh, so many different styles, so many grape varieties that don't exist anywhere else in the world. So it's like, uh, yeah, it's a real experience. Um, so yeah, I'll be sure to cover those, but also here in the Netherlands, I am really passionate about these uh, Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc. So I will probably do a video about those and also these Ripasso, uh, which actually I read it's, uh, it's quite a different technique in which I don't remember exactly, but Ripasso it means in Italian, I can sort of um, sort of understand it a bit since it's similar to Portuguese but it means to like go over it again so I believe they do some sort of treatment that uh, uh, yeah adds some extra qualities to the wine but uh, it's kind of yeah it just uh, uh, I need to go through it again and potentially do a video about that as well so yeah i hope that you enjoyed uh, the video um with this very low production uh value but uh i hope uh yeah it was interesting to go through these wines also check the way they arrived uh and my experience overall with vivino so thank you very much for watching if you did like the video I guess I need to ask you to like and subscribe, which is a bit of a cliche, but uh, yeah, you do know that YouTube has certain thresholds and if uh, they are not met, uh, yeah, it's quite hard to, uh, to actually uh, yeah, monetize the videos and then once they are monetized, there will be more budget to buy more wines and to do additional reviews for sure. So yeah, thanks in advance for your support and see you on the next video. So thanks for watching and take care.